Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. My name is Mobby and today I'm going to give you my first impressions review of Exiled Kingdoms. Now we're going to be talking about the game as well as showing you guys a lot of gameplay. Ultimately, letting you know my final thoughts on it and whether or not this game is for you. So let's get started. So right off the bat, Exiled Kingdoms is an isometric action RPG kinda like Diablo or Torchlight in that sense. The story, without going into spoilers, this is maybe the first hour of the story or so, it starts off telling you this amazing story of some evil people that have summoned monsters and destroyed pretty much your whole, you know, your whole area, your land, your country, and then the people on it go on a ship, they sail to a new land, and a century later, they have all these new towns and stuff. So it's an exiled kingdom. Makes sense. It's the title, right? So like I said, a century later, you are this character that you can create. A male or female, you can choose between different classes. There's only like four classes in this game. There is a warrior, a thief, a cleric, and a mage. And I'll go in between a lot of the differences later. But you choose one of those characters, you get a name, and then the story plops you right in. You have received a mysterious letter of inheritance and you have to go on a journey to find out why now along that journey you meet this character i'm not going to go into too many specifics but you meet this character you lose the letter and you get thrust into this giant world that you are pretty much free to explore and you have to either you know go on the main quest find the inheritance etc and go on that main mission or run around the world and do whatever you want Let's start off with the graphics before we get into the gameplay or anything like that. It's very, very old school feeling. Old stuff like Baldur's Gate. It isn't like, it's not like essentially the same game, but it has like the old PC, you know, MMO type of deals. It really reminds me of a single player MMO because of just the sheer freedom that you have. The game doesn't hold your hand either. It just jumps you in and you have to take it upon yourself to discover the world, learn the UI, read all the stats and all that stuff. But yeah, like I said, graphics are very, very basic, but they get the job done. It's not, uh, I guess you can say it's not like wonky in a sense. It does what it's supposed to do, and the game knows it. The game knows it. It has an awesome sense of humor. Every single time I found a new item, I would go into my inventory and read the tooltips, and it would say, oh, these braces make you look badass. You know, like, they knew what they were doing. You know, this is a modern-ish game. But with old school type of you know gameplay and feeling so if that's what you're looking for this is right up your alley so after a couple hours in the game the graphics really grew on me you know at the beginning i was like oh i don't know if i like these things i don't know if i want to like look at this for hours on end but you know i grew up with those old types of games so it kind of grew on me i'm not sure how the younger audience would feel about it today and you know with having all these new triple a titles with amazing graphics but it, it looked pretty good now Time for the gameplay portion. Like I said at the beginning of the game, you get to choose one of four different characters, uh, not characters, classes. You get to make your own character and then you get to specialize them, you know, customize it a little bit at the beginning with a different portrait. And then you could choose of uh, six different stats. You know, you got the basic strength, personality, magic, all of that stuff and charisma. And they all change the way your character interacts with the world, whether it be by, you know, more hit points, you attack more. Uh, maybe you are better in dialogue situations the more mana you get and when you level up stuff like that So like I said the warrior is a freaking tank powerhouse The only one I believe who can use two-handed weapons and a really really good armor set He's gonna be very tanky and then you have the rogue who is you know has a really really high armor base Really low HP, but this is out the most DPS then we got the cleric who has a lot of you know healing spells of course can wield a mace can wear an okay amount of armor and then the mage which i chose i chose the mage class in this one and it's really cool because as the mage class i was able to activate a spell to summon another member of my party it's called the lesser summon or something like that it has a little demon pet following me which i thought was pretty cool so one thing i have to give the game props for is a lot of times with RPGs and stuff, whenever you would level up a character, it would be very basic and be like, oh, you chose a mage? Let's go ahead and auto level for you. You know, it, it's gonna push it's gonna push up a little bit of magic, a little bit of health. In this game, you can choose, and you can choose to save up your points. For instance, as soon as you level up, it goes, okay, do you wanna spend your trait points on leveling up strength for more HP, or do you wanna do more magic and stuff like that? Or you can save it up and do it later. Same thing, whenever you level up, you get to get some skill points. 
which I put some skill points into my wand ability so I would have a better auto attack and my lesser ability so I would auto attack and I would have my little minion fighting along beside me because as a wizard I was very squishy I was purchasing um, I was purchasing equips that would give me more HP no armor but it would give me extra mana so I can cast like my Frost Storm, which is really awesome. I'm gonna talk about that Frost Storm ability. I started with it, and it's an ability where all you do is click, and then it just throws it in the direction you're looking at, and then it just keeps on moving. It has a mind of its own. It's pretty awesome. So, what are you essentially doing in this game? You pick your character, you go on in. Story aside, it's it plays very much like a single player MMO. I'm gonna just say that right here, right now. Lots of basic quests, fetch quests, but I, it seems to be like pre-generated or they just keep rolling in or it's I would go to the town square because I wanted to level up before I did anything right so I went to town I looked at whatever I can purchase to remember what I was gonna get I would go into town and they would be like oh go over here and kill this orc or kill this goblin this thief and if you don't know where he is hey here's a basic direction and if you want to know even more you can use your personality charisma skill go to the bar buy a drink and they would give you even more hints so you would go out there kill a guy and come on back kill a guy come on back very grindy and then aspect but anyone who has played these types of games and they love the grindy aspect you know that you know the thought of enemies dropping gold and dropping equipment because the enemies here they have a pretty good drop rate and they drop a lot of different equipment that you can either wear on yourself or sell it and it's really really fun to just you know kill 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 oh am i gonna get something good give me the good loot you know that type of deal so if you're into these type of games yeah it, it kind of itches it it, 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 it kind of scratches that itch for uh you know randomly generating the loot it's fun um another thing i want to say is i really like how they have random npcs that travel along the roads between towns and even in towns um, sometimes, you know, if you don't have anything else, anybody or anything in your party, you can talk to them and be like, hey, do you want to join me? 70 gold, 100 gold, do you want to be in my party? You can say yes or no, of course. Um, whenever you say no, they go, oh, don't freaking come back crying to me when a goblin shoves iron up your butt or something like that. It was hilarious. But I, I came into a weird bug. So I was playing as a mage character, right? And I guess a full party counts as two people. So when I would talk to another person and be like, hey, can I join you 70 gold or whatever? I would say yes. And then we go, you have a full party. And I go, no, I don't. It's just me. And I turn around and it's my little lesser familiar, which is right there. Now that familiar, you get to resummon and die, resummon and die a lot. Now remember, this is only for the mage class. I can't talk about any other classes, but pretty much I had to wait till he died. And then I would talk to the person and then they would join me and then I could resummon. So I have three people in my party. Otherwise, <laughs> other than two. And these guys are really squishy though, so they die pretty fast. Yeah, it's funny. So like I said, very old school, but it's open world. You know, you really can travel anywhere you want, but eh, you know, as you know, the further you get, the harder enemies will be. I had a really, really fun time finding the dungeons in the world. As soon as you start the game, you could run off to the west and you can find a nice little goblin cave you go in. You know, sometimes it's gonna be a little difficult. They even have traps and then it's just really fun looting because the enemies do respawn after a certain you know in-game time i think it's like a full in-game day and uh, you can go back and keep farming if you want to do that or you can keep running around and doing quests the best way to level up that i have found is actually doing the quest and i found myself really like micromanaging my map and my time because so because there's no fast travel as far as i know i did not find a way to fast travel but you have a map and you can easily see where you're going and you're like okay this person gave me a quest in this town i should probably do these two quests while i'm here at this town it's so much good they give you a lot of gold and stuff it's really awesome but then there are some little quirks in this game where it's old school but come on you didn't have to like you, you could have done some quality of life stuff for instance you, the, the hot keys get assigned automatically to your skills you know one two you can switch them around so one, two, three, and whatever on your keyboard will be your skills. Uh, will be your I yeah, will be your skills. And then the items you choose, for instance, consumables would be your F1 keys and all that stuff. So I have a red potion would heal me 75 or something like that. I would assign it to my F1 key, right? As soon as it runs out and I pick up another red potion, it doesn't replenish my F1 key. I have to keep reassigning if I run out. So I always find myself having to, let's just say, I don't want to run out. So I always have at least one on it. So I don't have to keep redoing that. And you would have to do that for every other item in there. It's a small little annoyance. I wish it was more quality of life in that sense. But small things like that. The game has an auto attack function. But, it, but listen to me when I say auto attack. This is 
a real-time combat system. You cannot heal during combat unless you have a skill. You cannot open up the menu and equip new things. You are there, you are fighting, you can run away. It's all real-time. If you die, you die. Now this game, you're definitely gonna wanna be hitting F9, which is the quick save in this game. F9, F9, F9 all the time before you get into big battles. Now there is a little bit of risk though, because if you were playing on the normal setting, and which I was, there is easy, normal, hard, and hardcore, which is pretty much one life type of deal. If you're playing normal, you can save anywhere in towns, and you can save quick save anywhere on the overworld, but you cannot do it in dungeons, which is fun. I found myself like losing 10 to 20 minute progress in dungeons because I made small one small mistake, and we ended up dying, and I respawned outside of this. So very old school you gotta save whatever you can save whenever you can there is auto save when you when you sleep in the game but other than that you gotta do it manually but that's no problem so like i said this game who is this game for this game showed up nowhere on steam i really liked it i saw it and i don't know how many people are actually like me where they see these types of screenshots of an isometric thing uh, with people attacking small little sprites, I don't say sprites, small little models attacking and a lot of like, a lot of stats on the screen explaining. I get really excited when I see these types of games. Anything that is isometric, mostly for the most part, whether it be strategy like Final Fantasy Tactics or, you know, Disgaea, Mercenary, Kings. Was that the game? I just purchased a new game on, on uh, Switch the other day, which it was Mercenary something. And it had like three games mixed into one that were originally on the 3DS, but I digress. I get really excited when I see this game. So this game is definitely not for people who are looking for a Diablo, like a crazy, crazy, you know, new game to call their favorite. This is definitely a a one-off, you know, maybe a couple of sessions playthrough. I don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna play it a little bit more because it's really fun. But I don't think this is a game that is gonna shake the world up in any way. I would not even attempt to stream it because my audience would not like it. It's that kind of game where it's more enjoyable for to, to play than watch. And it's very grindy. It kind of plays like a mobile game uh, in a sense where you're just going to come back every once in a while, you know, all, without the microtransactions, of course. So, you know, action RPG real time for, I would say, for Torchlight fans, Diablo fans, etc. If you're looking for super, super heavy, heavy story, this is not your game. This game is all about, oh, I'm going to make a new character. I'm going to grind it out and I want to make this kind of build. Let's see how this wrecks the world up. So this world is huge. I have not explored a lot of it. I'm only a couple hours in, but I'm definitely going to play more. And hey, if I do, I might put out another video letting you know my final thoughts. But this is my first impressions with you of Exile the Kingdoms. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did leave a like, it helps so much. If you haven't already, yo, hit that subscribe button. I upload a lot of daily videos if you guys have any games you would like me to check out and cover for my first impressions review series let me know and if this review helped you out let me know down below are you going to get this game is this for you what if you played it what didn't you like about it etc let's get the conversation going thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time